One more time. Hey everybody, how are we going tonight? There we go. I love how vocal you guys are tonight. Uh, so for anyone who doesn't know me, I'll introduce myself. My name's Ross Thomas. I'm a team member here at So It's Your Story. But I'm not up here tonight to make my introduction alone. I'm here to make another introduction, and that is here at So It's Your Story, we have a ever-expanding team. You know, more people get behind our cause, and they want to be a part of our cause. More people see what we do, and they want to get behind that and be a part of that just as we are. So. I'm honored tonight to make the introduction to all of you to our newest team member, Rob, come to the stage. Everybody give him a round of applause. Hey guys, what's up? Yo, hey. Hey, I'm Rob. Uh, whatever, you know, it's not about me. Uh, it's about Sam, it's about Ross, it's about Dan Daniel, it's about Sarah, it's about Jeremy, and it's about those stories. So. I just got involved at around January. My partner and I have been on stage. I've met heaps of people, about half the crowd is my friend now. It's amazing. And what really got me in was the vision of So What's Your Story? Sam said that he wants a global organization of raw, unadulterated storytelling. And that kind of vision is so attractive to come and be a part of. I've been watching and wanted to get started helping out. So that's why I'm here. Uh, it's not about me. It's about the storytellers, so without further ado, thank you all so much for your welcome as well. We're going to go to the next story, and it's a video, and I think you guys will really, really like it. Get buckled down and present yourselves. Thanks. Reflections of Sandra. My mother was a truly remarkable woman, though even when the odds were stacked against her, won many battles in life. She struggled with various health issues all the way from her early 20s until the day she died at the age of 67, when she finally let go and found a deep sense of peace. She was a true inspiration to me. She showed me what it was like to be brave and have true courage and strength even in the toughest of situations. She showed me there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. Sandra was the best type of parent and role model you could ever want as a child. At least she was in my eyes. She showed me how to live life despite all the challenges she had to face. She was a truly inspirational person. She faced every struggle head on and with true courage and conviction. She would not give up and always come through in the end. Sandra was amazingly fearless. If she had any fear, she certainly did not show it. Sandra was also my teacher. She taught me that everything in life is very much like one of my favourite quotes, which is, life is not measured by the breath we take, but by the moments that take our breath away. I could never have imagined how difficult my journey would become after my mother passed away. In the early days of losing her, I faced an uphill battle and questioned many times why I still existed and found myself wondering what my purpose now was. I felt complete emptiness and an all-consuming despair that I never felt before. I honestly believed I was nothing without her. And so I refused to take part in life anymore. I could not or did not know how to be happy even at the simplest of tasks, like watching TV. And in those fleeting moments where I found myself laughing, I made myself stop, since I felt I was being disrespectful to mum. I barely slept, hardly ate at all, and was living minute to minute, second to second, because that's all I could manage to do. I got to the point in life where I felt like the best thing for everyone was for me to end my own life. See, in my mind, that was the only solution. It would take the worry and burden away from my family and friends. I figured if I did not exist in the physical sense, then life would be easier for them, and then I could be reunited with my mother. I 
found that because of my profound grief and depression, not only did I change, but so did my relationship with people. No one knew how to deal with me anymore. I felt like others, to others, it was easier to pretend that I did not exist. As a result, I quite literally shut myself down and I put an emotional wall up to protect myself from any further hurt. If I still existed, then it was easier to pretend I didn't. I could not see a way forward or a way out of what I was experiencing or feeling, and I guess on some level, I didn't want to feel okay either. It is difficult to imagine surviving such extreme grief, much less transcending this grief. I mean, how does one triumph over sorrow when you cannot imagine the pain ever going away? Let me tell you it is possible. I survived, and while that grief initially broke me, I've since discovered the courage to come back and live life fully in a way that my mother would have wanted me to. Back then, I just didn't realise the strength that was in me all along, and I wasn't ready to feel okay. When you find the courage to confront your grief and whatever else is going on, only then you can opt to survive and transcend that pain. If you decide to do this, you'll have the ability to see that that loss had a specific purpose. You will have the opportunity to turn this crisis into a way of learning, evolving and finding peace, both spiritually and emotionally. So now you have a choice. You can either withdraw from life like I did, or you can choose to learn and grow from the experience. You can choose to feel okay again. Ultimately, the only person who can make this choice is you. Through the heartbreak, the turmoil of losing my mum, I learned so much about myself and life in general. My hope for each of you reading my story is that you can find the hope and courage that is within you and that through your pain you will come to realise your true purpose in life. Every dark moment hides an incredible lesson. Each and every one of us is an infinite and beautiful creature just waiting to remind what our unique gifts are. On November 23rd, 2016, I was diagnosed with MS, a condition that has no cure and like living, is like living with an invisible disease. You see, while I look normal on the outside, on the inside there's a lot going on underneath. After a second relapse of my MS back in late February and in being in hospital for five weeks, I was told I had breast cancer. But at this stage it is too small to treat, so it is a watch and wait situation. For a lot of people, this might turn their world upside down, but not for me. I'm of the mindset that these challenges are here to teach me something that is valuable. Life is precious, and I play a vital and important role to heal the world from grief and empower people to transcend their challenges and purpose. My hope is that you find the ability through my story to transcend your pain and grief. spoken about this in front of anyone, everyone outside my lawn, so I'll have to bear with me. Um, my mum passed away of single cell metastatic cancer. 
um, it was like Black Saturday through her body. So she had two tumours that were inside of her head, which were the secondary, that were actually growing outside of her head. And then she had a primary somewhere in her body. The thing that always amazes me is that we didn't know she was sick. She had no headaches, no pain, no nothing. The only thing we knew was the little lump that was on her head. Um, and after two doctors said it was nothing, that's when she got diagnosed. Um, the day that she went to the doctors, I had a sixth sense that that day my life was going to change. I just didn't know how it was going to change. I am someone that's a bit of a control freak. I like to know what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, and how it's going to happen. And when we, when we got the, the news that she had less than 12 months, but it was only three months, or in the end it was two weeks, um, I thought I could control it all and I'd be fine. And then two weeks, yep, no worries, I'll go back to work. It'll be easy because I've been essentially grieving for my mother ever since I was 10 because she was sick all my life. So when, as you saw and as you heard, when she did die, it hit me like a, a freight train. I didn't see it coming. I didn't know how to deal with it. You know, I, there were times where I couldn't get through a single second of, of the day without crying, without being with my family, without being with my niece and nephew. Um, and I didn't, as you said, I didn't, I didn't want to because I didn't know what to do. Uh, even the simple task of going on, on medication to try and help with that, um, I felt ashamed of because I felt like I disappointed her. Because I felt like I disappointed her because I couldn't save her from, from dying too. She'd saved me so many times that the one time that she needed me, I couldn't, I couldn't save her. So there was a lot going on for me when she died. And it wasn't until I really sat in it and I really sat and I wrote my book, which is available here tonight, Reflections of Sandra, that I really understood everything. I understood her, I understood myself, I understood our relationship, I understood why it was so profound. You know, from the, basically it was so profound from even the moment that I was born because I nearly died as a baby and that's why she was so protective of me and that just enhanced our relationship. And I realised that if it wasn't for the fact that I sat in my grief and I wrote about it, that I really learnt the lessons. And I really learnt the lessons of it's okay to grieve and be upset. I mean, I lost a lot of friends during the, the grieving process and, and my depression. I mean, I had friends break up with me, so to speak, via text message because they didn't know how to deal with me, as I said. It was really quite an enlightening experience looking back now because I weeded out, as I like to say, the weak and pathetic that didn't know how to deal with life. And the real people started to step forward, and it's the same with my MS and my own cancer. The real people are coming forward. The people that are meant to be in my life are coming forward now to support me in, in my own journey. And that's, you know, the, the ironic thing, I guess, that I wouldn't have learnt that lesson if she hadn't died. I wouldn't be here now if she hadn't died. I wouldn't have written the book if she hadn't died. So that's a, it's an interesting you know, balance. As much as I would love to have her here, she, she can't be because I can't live my purpose and do what I want to do. And that's continue to speak and, and share my story and make people less ashamed of being grief, less ashamed of being depressed because that's a stigma in society, right? You know, it's five steps and you're all good. Well, that's, that's not the, the case. And so like, that's okay. And that's what I want to do is help people be okay with that. Be okay with dealing with whatever they're dealing with and getting through that and hopefully supporting them to find that, that light at the tunnel that, that I found. Um, because my life couldn't be more, as well as it sounds, couldn't be more fulfilled even though I'm going through what I'm going through because I'm learning so much through this journey. I'm meeting people, I'm having opportunities like this. Sam doesn't know this, but the day that I was diagnosed with breast cancer was the day that I submitted the article to him. Um, that's where we connected with when I was in hospital with my second MS relapse. You know, there's a, there's a certain beauty, beauty in that. There's a balance. You know, while there's something bad going on, there's always a balance of something else that's going to come in that's going to balance that and, and make it okay. Um, 
And that's what I always look for. Like I've, I've had the unique uh, opportunity, I guess, of everything that's going on, good or bad. I don't see it as a negative anymore. I can always go, okay, well, this is not great, but what am I meant to learn from this? And usually it's, for me, in a different way of, you know, writing another book or blog article. Or I've written a blog article about my MS to empower women to be comfortable in their own skin and comfortable in, you know, what they're going with, whether it's weight issues or a health issue, you know, another sort of health issue. Um, and that's what I'm meant to do. And, you know, it's just unfortunate that, you know, unfortunately mum had to pass away for me to step forward, you know, take stage. But I know that she's living her purpose in heaven because her light was too bright for here. So that's my lesson for everyone here tonight is to always look for, for that light because no matter how bad you think it is, it's not, you know, there's always a, a beauty in there. Up you get, up you get, you know you want it. That was um, the only story out of almost 300 stories I've heard um, in two years that made me cry once, let alone made me cry a lot of times. And I'm on the verge at the moment. It's just um, it's so beautiful and amazing. And to have you get up here and tell people how that you've now found your purpose and that it's to help people. I think that's the best thing ever. So thank you so much. And can we share our appreciation again, please? The first half is heavy, <laughs> the second half a little less. Um, this is now we are, where we are going to give you the opportunity to um, have a drink and connect and go out to intermission and share your story and um, there will be more time dedicated after the show for that. However, um, I'll give you, we'll, I mean, we'll give you 20 minutes now to really process the first half and all of the amazing things that you um, just bear witness to and take a shot. Yes. Oh, my God. That sounds amazing. And, and the, second, the second half will commence in 20 minutes. We have a countdown and the team will be out there. Um, the team will be out there and we will... Uh, really try to make everyone feel comfortable and make everyone feel welcome and really try to connect with everyone because we love you guys. We love you guys and we want to know about you. And then the second, the second half of the show, we have three stories, one being from um, Beowulf Jones from Los Angeles. So take the next 20 minutes to connect and I'll see you back soon. Thank you, everyone. Get to it. There's always more going on than what you think that you know. There's always things happening around you and you can never act like, well, hey, I know everything. Or you just keep yourself open to, all right, well, now through this experience, I know that all around me at any one given time, there are things happening. I know that for a fact. Give quality content and then give quality content and then give quality content and then ask people to come to our show. Yeah. And now that you know your avatar for, for So What's Your Story and all of that sort of stuff, it definitely has a place. I just think you're overreaching for yeah. wanting to get it done in six months. Mm -hmm. We can have an inside blog or like or, or like a series of small websites within the website yeah. uh, where we just deliver all, 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 the, all the praise we need to give to our speakers, all the praise we need to give to our public. Chuck it in there. Yeah. But social media should just be like short, digestible messages. Say that again. <laughs> 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 straight in. Can you just identify yourself again? If we were yeah. to give people a great video on Snapchat, which is what Snapchat is for, if we were yeah. to give people <coughs> what the content on Facebook, the, the, uh, the 
content on Facebook that matches what people want on Facebook, the content on Twitter that matches what people want on Twitter, yeah. and provide them with quality content. That's a good job. But I'll also let you guys switch up. <laughs> Just incorporate that, you know, every single one of the participants that are part of what we do. Yeah. I wake up to this, this is the best thing to wake up to. He says, Sam, who am I kidding? I want to be a part of creating So What's Your Story's future. The more I think about it, the more it's calling my name. And so I ask you, my friend, can I be a part of the Swiss team? Which is incredible. Exactly the kind of guy we need, we just have to figure out what is best at.